All right, folks, here we go. Log4OM2, big thanks to Log4OM2 team for getting the TCI interface working on their software. Oh, yeah. Huge bonus. Huge. The only th other thing I'm looking for is the Vermont QSO party. And the most, excuse me, the most important thing would be a Cabrillo, uh, the ability to export the, a log, excuse me, a contest log. Too much coffee. A contest log in Cabrillo format without having to use a converter after the fact. Uh, love your software, guys. Thank you very much. Um, absolutely well done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys quick, anybody running a Sun uh, radio, expert radio, or anything that uses a T, any transceiver using TCI interface, how to get it up and running. So first thing we want to do is we want to go to your uh, transceiver software, open options, go over to TCI, uh, click on the TCI tab, make sure this is enabled, and make sure you write down the port, 40001. That, that was the default port that came up on the screen. I did not touch that. All right. Uh, click apply. Okay. Now we're over. That's it for that. That's all you got to do. Now we head over to log 4 om 2 uh, First thing we need to do is set up the cluster. So what you want to do is you want to make sure your cluster's set up. And hopefully you already have this set up. So, uh... What you do is you open the Telnet cluster over connect in the connect window up top here. This will pop open cluster management. Go over to the right hand side, click on connection tab and choose the cluster you want to use. I'm not going to tell you which one to use. I've been using the VE7CC-123 for a very long time. That's the one I want to, that's the one I use. So what I do is what you can do is, uh, left click on the cluster you want to choose, hit the plus sign, and it will load it into active servers. Go up here and hit connect, bada boom, bada bing. You're off and running, all right? Uh, you can look at the cluster, it'll take a while for it to populate because it's gathering data. All right, and once you know that's running, you should see a connected, this green connected here, and at the bottom of the software window, you should see cluster in green, connected. Once that is done, now go to settings, program configuration, go down to cluster. I have cluster auto start, show cluster grouped recommended, show stable clusters, um, everything else I left completely alone. Um, so I did, I did not touch anything else in here. Okay, once that's done, I don't have any sound on the alert. <laughs> I don't, I have enough going on. I don't need things bonging and banging and dinging and donging. So uh, now you can go down to, next step is you want to go to the cat interface. And first thing you want to do is this left-hand tab, settings. You want to go to this dropdown, hit TCIP, TCI protocol. Make sure that's highlighted. Click on cat auto start. I don't have anything for delay, nothing else. I have everything as you see it here. The only thing I did put in is a hot key for PTT and that's the plus keys. And I also have the toggle turned on so I don't have to hold the key down to transmit. Uh, I can punch it once to transmit, punch it again to key out. Uh, that's it for that. Now you move over, you'll see settings, Omnirig, Hamlib, TCI, go over to the TCI tab. This is the default IP address. It's a, what's called a loopback, 127.0.0.1. And uh, leave that alone. And remember that port from the software, uh, the default port 40001. You want to plug my default port that popped up in here, Log4M, was not correct. It would not connect. So I plugged that port in, that port number in, hit save and apply. And bada boom, you should see everything light up on your screen. The VFO, you name it. If it does not, go to connect, cat. If you see, uh, if you see start cat lit up. And this is grayed out. So if I, if I hit that, if it shows up looking like that, if it didn't connect, go to this. 
go to cat you'll see start cat with a green check mark hit that bang she should just take right off for you all right here's the fun part this is the part that did not work and it would lose connection on the sun every time using omni rig I could get it running on OmniRig, no problem. But the problem is it wasn't stable. And uh, this cluster did not work. So if you notice on the software, I have the cluster active on the software. So these are all spots um, on the cluster. These are all stations that have been spotted, right? That's running on the sun. So if we go back to Log4OM, now the very cool part is, is you can click on one of these and some uh, for my system it takes a triple click boom 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 and you'll notice that what happens is uh, J27 what is that IMS uh, something like that popped in uh, and you can see that it autom now this will only work this how it populates into your uh, call sign panel and name and all the other country. Uh, it will only work if you have set up in the settings configuration area um, to use like QR to pull information from QRZ.com, right? So that's the only way that'll work. But, but you'll you know you'll be able to grab a lot of information. If you're a subscriber, it'll grab a ton of information. But you will need the API key. I am not a subscriber, so it grabs a limited amount of information. So it plugs his name, the call sign in. You're all ready to go, man. Um, and you'll notice that the radio goes right there. So let's say, you know, I want to go back to, oh, let's go up here. So Echo Alpha 5 India Uniform Sierra. That populated 14266. Go over to the rig. 14266. There he is. All right, so everything's working. There you go, folks. Nothing to it. Piece of flipping cake. Um, now, if you want to see the band map, if for some reason you can't see the band map here, there's a couple ways you can open the cluster. Uh, right here in these tabs, it has a cluster view. So you can click on any of these. Here's your frequency, so you know the band you're on. And you can adjust the filters for what you're seeing as well. Um, so let's do uh, Lima 2, 1, Romeo, Charlie, Sierra. And it works the same. See a 14202? Took it there. Go over to the spectrum. 14202. There you go, folks. All right, so that's, that's another way to do it. But if you want to get... If you want to get the, the band map... This is what I guess they call a band map. Um, this will put all the clusters on here so you can see everything all at once. Um, if that's not visible, go to the top. This is the band map right here. If you want to see this and have this up all the time, which I do, go to the top right here. Uh, this is your this is your cluster start and stop. Two, three, four, five. Fifth, ten, fifth button over. Click on that. And that, well, I don't want to open two, but uh, that will open the band map and your clusters will, will all pop in there. That's it, folks. 7-3. Enjoy. And again, a huge thank you to the Log4OM team. Uh, you guys are killer, man. I love your software. I do. I love it. It's some of the most passive. It might quite, quite possibly be the most passive software. As far as, as far as a log, logging program, as far as trying to hog things, resources, ports, that kind of thing, I've never had an issue with their software in SCORE because now they have, well, they had it in the last version, the previous version of this, the uh, contest setup. But uh, just, to, you know, uh, for us casual contesters and even hardcore contesters, if they could get that, uh, I know it's a lot of work. Um, Maybe the Vermont QSO party, because I live in Vermont. And uh, the uh, Cabrillo export capability, uh, so we don't have to use a conver converter. Complete. Put the nail in the box. Done. 
Seven three guys. We'll catch you later. Thanks for watching.